So on the applications we learned for section 3.9, let's be able to uh, compute the derivative of inverse functions. So, so far we had computed the derivatives of all polynomials, trig functions, exponentials um, and and also compositions of these functions and, uh, and everything else that was uh, allowed by the differentiation rule that we learned so one thing was missing and was how to compute the derivatives of inverse functions and these are important uh, uh, functions as uh, natural log for instance is the uh, inverse of the exponential function and uh, we also have the arc sine arc cosine arc tan and all these um, other very important uh, 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 functions for analysis in general so uh, how did we accomplish this so as an example We'll go back to this example we already saw saw this in class so what happens if we wanted to say compute the derivative of of arc sine of x well uh, we have y is the finest of the arc sine of x and we can apply sine of x on both sides well sine just sine I'm sorry sine on both sides we can take the sine of y and now um, the sine of arc sine of x Remember, arc sine is the inverse of sine, and we have this relation that tells us that f of the inverse of f at x is just x. So this just gives us x. And such we can take derivatives on both sides uh, and take the derivative of y implicitly. So here we get that this is cosine of y, and remember y is defined implicitly in terms of x. So we need to apply the chain rule here. So it's cosine because that's the derivative of sine, and we multiply by y prime then. And the derivative of x is 1, so that gives us that y prime is equal to 1 over the cosine of y okay this is not enough because we want to uh, write down the derivative of y of arc sine uh, in terms of x okay so y prime we accomplish here so y prime is equal to 1 over the cosine of the arc sine of x and how to evaluate this I mean in fact this is I mean usually when you think of trigonometric expressions you think of things that are very far from polynomials or rational expressions but it turns out that this expression here on the right will simplify very nicely on how do we evaluate this I mean how can we simplify this expression on the right well we have to keep in mind that the all trigonometric functions are connected and go back to the definition so let's look at the the definition of the uh, sine and cosine of uh, an angle the angle here 
is arc sine, so it's y. So this is y over here. And uh, assuming the hypotenuse is equal to 1, then this side here would have to be equal to x. So x divided by hypo uh, the hypotenuse gives us the sine of y. Sine of y is equal to x, as we can see over here. Right? Sine of y is equal to x. So x divided by 1 has to be equal to, uh, well, it's equal to the sine of y. This is opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So now we want to find out what is the cosine of y. So that would be this side here divided by 1. So this is the cosine of y. But for that we just use Pythagoras, uh, this is the hypotenuse, so x squared plus the cosine squared of y is equal to 1. So that implies that the cosine of y is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so then going back to the derivative of y prime, which is arc sine, sine of x prime, is equal to 1 over the cosine of the arc sine of x, which is cosine of y, and that's equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so that's, that was one of the applications, again, of, uh, of uh, implicit differentiation. Okay, so in the same way, as we said, so this is just a review. We already uh, went over, over all these uh, derivatives. So the same way, the derivative of the inverse of cosine is minus 1, the square root of 1 minus x squared. We also had the derivative of uh, um, the arctan. Arctan of x prime is uh, a 1 over x squared plus 1. And I said this will be very relevant for you when you're in Calc 2. At least those of you who will be in Calc 2. And then we also have the derivative of the secant. Arc secant. Slightly more complicated, it's just one, one over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And all of these uh, uh, derivatives can be obtained in the same way. So by means of writing down the definition, applying the inverse function, and here is sine for secant e inverse, you need to apply secant, and then differentiate things implicitly, like in here. Cosine of y times y prime, this y prime is defined implicitly. And when you arrive at some, uh, this kind of expression here, use the relations that you have uh, and the definitions of the trig functions, and you will arrive at these expressions. We covered many of these examples in class. You have also some corresponding expressions for the arc cotangent, are uh, cosecant, which only entail a change in sign, so you have to add a minus one, I mean, multiply by minus one uh, to the corresponding expressions without the co. So the tan, uh, the derivative of arc cotan is minus one over x squared plus one, the derivative of arc cosecant uh, is minus one over the absolute value of x, the square root of x squared minus one. Those are also available in the book, um, so that's that. Now, what about, um, so yeah, that's just one application, application, and now, again, just a reminder. So what is the derivative of e to the x? It's just e to the x. What about the derivative of a to the x? 
we saw that this is just the natural log natural log of a times a to the x for uh, any constant a greater than zero okay so this is the uh, derivative in such, in such function and how can we derive that, uh, derive that? Uh, we take logarithms we can well, this is one way of doing it taking logarithms on both sides um, but for that we needed the derivative of natural log natural log again is the same thing e to the natural log of x is x because of the same formula and applying the same principle we derived the, the derivative of the natural log it was 1 over x this is very important again this all came back to the same thing so e to the natural log of x is x right so when we differentiate things uh, let me just go with the entire computation then when when we differentiate we get we need to apply the chain rule so e to the natural log of x times the derivative of what's inside which we don't know and that is equal to 1 but what is e to the natural log of x is x right so this implies that the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x remember we already wrote it down this very same lecture but uh, f we have the relations f applied to f inverse of x is equal to x and the same is true for f inverse of f of x So in this case, f is the exponential function, and natural log is the inverse of the exponential function. So now we have a whole family of derivatives that we didn't know before, and um, that is part of the applications uh, of implicit differentiation. Now the ne next thing that we did uh, with this technique was to over something that was called logarithmic differentiation so what is that well it turns out that sometimes when you have uh, complicated expressions that are products and quotients of uh, functions it is uh, sometimes uh, easier to compute derivatives by taking the log of the function first. So how does I mean? Again, we saw this uh, last week, or or whenever we actually saw that. So suppose we have f of x is equal uh, to x plus one to the two hundred times sine of x squared all that divided by e to the x times the natural log of x plus uh, the tangent of x then what happens if we are asked to find a prime then it well we could could simply apply the uh, product quotient rule and also the chain rule to compute all this but there will be a mess so the alternative that uh, logarithmic differentiation provides is that it actually splits this uh, uh, by taking logs we split everything here into just very small pieces which are very easy to differentiate so what is uh, the technique so we first take the natural log of f of x and remember we need to 
uh, rem uh, we need to uh, know the rules for natural log or logarithms in, in general very well. So when we apply that, so here are the properties natural log of the product is the natural log of A plus the natural log of B. Natural log of E is equal to 1. Natural log of 1 is equal to 0. And the natural log of A to a power, say x, is x times the natural log of A. Right? Okay, so keeping this in mind, when we apply it, when we apply it to this example, we get 200, remember the exponents come down, times the natural log of x plus 1, plus the plus the natural log of sine of x squared, and then everything that's in the bottom is going to be subtracted from, from, the, from the logarithms on the top, so natural log of e to the x minus the natural log of the natural log of x plus the tangent of x. Okay, so so then if we take derivatives on, on both sides, we get the well, we apply the chain rule on the left hand side. So you have one over f of x times f prime of x. This is what we're really interested in, f prime of x. is equal to, and then here, uh, 200 is just 200, and the derivative of natural log of x plus 1 is 1 over what's inside, so x plus 1, times the, the derivative of x plus 1, which is 1, plus the derivative of natural log of sine of x squared. So now we need to apply the chain rule three times. So natural log gives us 1 over sine x squared. Then we need to multiply by the derivative of sine, which is cosine of x squared, and then times the derivative of what's inside yet, which is x squared, so 2x. Here we just need to know that natural log of e to the x is just... Um, so up here, this is just minus x. Remember the exponent can be brought down as a multiplying natural log of e, but natural log of e is 1. Natural log of e is 1. So then we get minus 1, so when we differentiate this term. Term give us, uh, these, uh, this term gives us 1. And here you have to apply the, for the last term, we need to apply the chain rule again. So it's minus 1 over the natural log of x, was the tangent of x, and we need to multiply this by the the derivative of what's inside, so 1 over x uh, plus secant squared of x. So finally, a prime of x will be equal to f of x times this whole expression here, 200 over x plus 1 plus 1 over sine of x squared cosine of x squared times 2x minus 1 minus 1 over natural log of x plus tangent tangent of x and then times 1 over x plus secant squared of x. And we still need to so that with a parenthesis. But we actually know that f of x is equal to this whole expression here. So when we substitute what f of x is, we get our derivative. So this is known. So I'm not going to copy here because it's going to make a mess. But you know. So when you write down your answer, you go back to the expression that defines f of x and just put it back there. It's always going to be that. Okay, so uh, 
this would be much easier and uh, than actually going through the product rule and portion rule and the chain rule for the original expression and that uh, yeah and so applying this unique so is is not good in this case but going through uh, logarithmic differentiation actually allows for um, for a much simpler approach and you're much less prone to uh, uh, arithmetic mistakes as well we'll continue in the next uh, video with a review